Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God. Prayer Circle starts now. 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 Good evening and welcome to Prayer Circle on Family Media. Family, that's Family Radio 316, Family TV, and online on familymedia.tv. Call your friends up and uh, write, write to them, text them, and let's join together on this program. Then Family Prayer Circle every weekday, Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. We gather together at this altar, at this place, sharing our praise reports, our prayer requests, what God is doing in your life, what you'd like God to do, and we pray together at this table, and at this table of prayer, God hears and he answers prayer. So if God has done something in your life that you'd like to share with us, please kindly communicate with us on WhatsApp and on SMS and let's know what God has been doing in your life. And if you're struggling with something or you feel pushed to a wall, pushed to the corner, also share with us and we will be praying together because we talk to our Father who knows us, who understands us, and who answers prayer. This is Prayer Circle and I'm David Dimitai with you and Prayer Circle is your program your program your family your friends let us share together tonight we are sharing we continue sharing on the topic kingdom beings because yes we were created as human beings and the lord jesus christ came through the first adam we are human beings through jesus christ jesus came i came to make us sons of the king and through him, we have been made kings and priests unto God. So this week we are exploring what does it mean to be a kingdom being. So yesterday we began to look at are we are Christians human? Yes, we are. But we have a little more grace because of the blood of Jesus Christ that has washed us and made us members of the family of God. So more is expected on us, of us. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1 to 12. We'll be exploring every day what are called the Beatitudes, the Kingdom Manifesto, Jesus' practical instructions for the life of the new beings that he came to create by his own blood when he died on the cross. So communicate with us on WhatsApp 786 316 316 that's our WhatsApp number 786 316 316 send your text messages your short messages and let's let's hear from you and if you want to send an SMS it's 20316 20316 and let's hear from you and so that that we let's invite the Lord into this meeting today as we expect from him as we are gathered at his feet shall we pray together dear heavenly father we bless your name and thank you tonight thank you for preserving us and keeping us alive thank you for the purpose which you have for each one of us and for all of us together Oh God, we know we do not live by chance, but it's by design. You designed us. You created us. You have a plan for us, oh God. You know the thoughts that you think towards us, the thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give us a future, a hope, and an expected end. Thank you, Lord, that in your design, life is not supposed to be unexpected. The only unexpected things, perhaps, are the pleasant surprises that you have designed for every single one of your children. So we welcome you tonight on Prayer Circle in the presence of everyone who is tuned in on radio, on television, or online. We ask, oh God, that they would experience and feel your presence the same. We pray that you'll hear our prayers. Every prayer that is lifted up to you, oh God, may your Father's heart consider it and release an answer from heaven for every testimony that is raised may you recognize and take all the glory and father establish that testimony establish that good be with us O oh father on this program as we continue begin with us continue with us end with us and let your presence do a great work fill us with joy fill us with hope Fill us with gladness and strengthen us with your power. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you so much. I'd like to read the Kingdom Manifesto as I continue to uh, expect and receive your messages. Uh, we already have some of them. Joy already greeting us. Thank you, Joy. You're always there and always faithful. Good evening, Pastor David and Prayer Circle family. Joy from Kitengela 
is tuned in. Amen. That's so good. Thank you so much. So Mary is saying hi. Hi, prayer circle. I'm Mary from Thika Road. Please say hi to my mom, siblings, Anne and Joy from Nakuru. I'm sure they are listening. Listening listening to you, hearing you clear and sound. May the almighty God bless the whole prayer circle fraternity and someone from, uh, uh, this is a quote from Family Media Prayer Warrior saying, trusting God for a job. Rosemary from Mombasa. Good evening, Pastor David and Prayer Circle family. How are you doing? We are doing well. Extremely blessed and highly favored, I assure you. Please pray with me for my pressure to level up to normal. It's extremely high. Oh yes, as you're tuned in, the Lord God is going to visit you. We are here connected with heaven and the Lord God is going to bless you. So I'd like to read from the Kingdom Manifesto. Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 to 12. If you're somewhere you can turn and turn with me and read. That's alright. If you're listening in, busy doing something else or driving home or sitting or busy preparing a meal for your family, you're still welcome. If you're seated in your office completing some work, that's all right. Tune in and let's pray together and the Lord God bless you. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 12. And seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up on a mountain and when he was set, he, when he was seated, his disciples came to him. That's to tell you that Jesus has already seen you and he is set. He's ready for you this evening. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are, the poor, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. I pray that you see God in action in your life. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all manner, all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they, the prophets who were before you. Yes, you're joined to the company of the great people. Today and tonight, we are emphasizing on Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. It says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Are you mourning about anything? Is there some mourning in your heart? Are there things going on in your life or things that have gone on in your life that you're not comfortable with? There is comfort in the Lord. And tonight we are exploring comfort for the comfortless. In a world that is so comfortless, so much bad news. Right now, seven o'clock, almost on every, almost on every other media media station, there is news, and they say bad news sells. So majority of the news is bad news. Prices going up, accidents here. Who killed another? Somebody's head was cut off. Some house burnt. Another house collapsed. Oh my. There's so much bad news in the world, but there is comfort in God for those who look up to him. So please do communicate with us. What are you, what, is there any mourning in your life? Is there any sorrow in your life? What would you like God to do for you? Please write to us on 786 316 -316, that's on WhatsApp or 20316. So you're all welcome. Thank you so much, our prayer partners who are with us. Thank you for our family media partners god knows you're there and welcome and the lord bless you at times so, you feel that god is quiet on you like nothing seems to be happening but let me tell you that every teacher has to keep silence when their student is writing an exam because they have confidence in what they've already taught you they believe you're going to pass that exam and they dare not speak to you because you may be disqualified that's what happens sometimes when you're going through the exams of life God may be silent, but it's because he trusts his investment in you.
by the word of God, by the vision he's given you, by the seed of God's word in your heart, is going to cause you to overcome. So you need not be afraid. God is always there for you. Yes, God is faithful and you'll fill your life with joy unspeakable. This is prayer circle where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God. So send us your messages. Let's communicate together. The WhatsApp number is 786 316 316. SMS number 20316. Let's communicate. So all of you, our viewers on Family TV, our listeners on Radio 316, and those who are connected online on familymedia.tv, the Lord is here with us. And tonight we're exploring the topic that uh, blessed are those who mourn. There is comfort for the comfortless. Yes, there's comfort for you. If you feel you're not comforted, there is comfort for you. And our scripture theme is Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And the question may be, what blessedness is there in mourning? We'll be exploring that in a few minutes. We already have some uh, prayer requests uh, from our partners, uh, Charles says, pray for stability at work. I'm facing challenges. You are an overcomer. And, in your, and then someone is saying, I thank God for the healing of my sister. This Nancy is saying, I thank God for the healing of my sister from TB. Pray for my dad and my brothers, Isaac and Timothy, all three. They need God's touch. God will deliver them and keep them safe from whatever addictions or slavery that they are in. Pray for my mother's grace to stay uh, with our father, who is an alcoholic. Someone else is saying that. I will tell you, it's, it takes grace. But you know what the James says? God gives more grace. So may it be. Somebody has a case tomorrow before the law courts. Uh, may God help you, your husband, and you as you go to the court. As someone else is saying, we've been praying for my two nephews who got lost three years ago. My other nephew from January this year has never been to school because of stomach pain. We've all been in hospitals. We're praying for healing. Agnes, may the Lord visit your family. And just as Jacob... Jacob was lost for 22 years. Isaac did not see him, but Isaac knew the blessing of Abraham, which was on him, and the blessing which he had blessed him was going to abide with him. So Agnes, trust in God. Isaac says, pray for my finances and career growth. Indeed, God wishes that you prosper, be in health as your soul prospers. Victoria says, remember me and my family in prayers. God be God to your family and bless you. Someone is trusting God for a favor before men and God, like Jesus, receive it. Philly says, I have debts that have made me to lack sleep and peace. Oh yes, today's message is there for you. May God give you a breakthrough and a miracle, but before all that comes, may God give you peace. Someone is saying, my flu is not ending. Six months of having it. Wow, that's an affliction. May the Lord minister to you, even to your daughter and granddaughter. As uh, someone says, my grandmother is not okay at all. She's sick. Husband is out of the country. May God give him safety and may God grant him God's favor. Some, someone says things have gone from bad to worse. We desperately need your prayers. Uh, may the God who makes things better make mumbo sour sour in your case. Jane says, I'm desperate need for God's direction and provision for me. Uh, God is desperately in love with you and willing to provide. He provided for Israel 40 years in the wilderness. He will provide for you. Samantha says, pray for wisdom and continued provision. Oh, wow. You've prayed a prayer that God is delighted. James chapter 1, verse 5 and 6 says, if anyone is lacking wisdom, ask from him. May God give you wisdom. Someone says, pray for an opening and clients to locate me as I try to look for them. Yes, seek and you will find and may God also bring them to you. And someone says, I'm really trusting God for a breakthrough. In every area of my life, I've been stagnant for many years. May you hear the word of the Lord today saying, you've gone round this mountain long enough. And indeed, may you go forward. So those are from our partners, every an individual. A partner is an individual who's consistently and faithfully supporting family media. And you're welcome to be a partner. But all of us who are tuned in, God knows you and God is hearing you. We have some messages from you also. Hi, prayer circle, pray for me. I'm in the process of overcoming stress, depression, fear, worry, bitterness, anger, wrath. Wow, that's a handful. But it's not too much for God. Pray for me so that I'm strengthened to be an overcomer. That's what we are here for. Praying together and believing God that God is going to make you more than a conqueror through Christ. Family media, please pray for me. 
There's someone I'm waiting to be called for work, but Satan is trying to bring someone else. Please help me with prayers. Don't you worry. God has a place for you. Someone's greeting Pastor Flav. Hope she's hearing the from somewhere. Good evening, Pastor Flav and uh, David here. I trust you had a great day. Kindly pray for me for financial breakthrough and a stable job. God grant it to you. Good evening, Pastor David. Emily from Ruiro. Glad to tune in. You're welcome. I pray that God may grant me moments of joy and a new day uh, restoration after having lost almost all and going through unending storms for five years. But God is faithful and I am sure he will do. So will it be for you. God will give you joy in place of mourning. The Bible says in Psalm 30 verse 11, you've turned my mourning into dancing. May that be your testimony. So today we are looking at, you know, God, that uh, are you mourning about something? What does God say about it? You see, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, from verse 1, to verse 5, if you read it, but just take verse 1, verse 5, Isaiah 40, verse 1, after God has been speaking of so many judgments, Israel had sinned, they were going into sin, and God was telling them about troubled times that were ahead, enemies that would surround them. But it begins chapter 40 by saying, comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God, speak to Jerusalem and, and cry unto her, that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord double for her sins. Oh yes, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The comfort we have in a comfortless world is that God who is all able has already spoken your peace. He has already spoken what you need. God has already said what he's provided for you. And when we come to him in prayer and supplication, we are asking God to supply what is already provided. Do you know that before Adam was formed, God had planted a garden in Eden and put every tree there that was pleasant to the sight, good for fruit. He had put them in the garden. Then God put Adam in that garden. Before Haman rose up to punish Israel and to desire their extermination, Esther was already queen in Persia. She was already queen. She was the wife of Ahasuerus. So when the trouble arose, God already had positioned somewhere. So let me tell you something. God has already cared for your need. And I also want to comfort you and assure you that God is stirring a miracle for you. And the miracle is bigger than your need and it will last longer than your time of want. Remember those words, God is stirring a miracle for you. It is bigger than your need, and it will last longer than your time of want. So God has not forgotten you in the midst of any mourning that you have, in the midst of that depression. Oh, get the right impression that God cares for you. Okay, so do you have, are you mourning about something? Do you have a testimony of God's comfort? In any time of morning, please share it with us on 0786-316-316. Let's hear what you're saying. Uh, somebody is speaking from, uh, this is Zambia, enjoying the teachings. And thank you so much. Tuned in from Zambia. That's Ndola. Thank you for tuning in. Someone saying, praise God and purity. Please pray for me, for my back for it to heal. May God do it. Oh, Christine says, I lost, pray for me, I lost my job today. I'm so down. So there, Christine is mourning because her job was lost. But you know what? God has another one. For every door that closes, there are seven doors that are open. Someone is trusting God for healing, for uncle and aunt. The healing hands of Jesus are there. Hello, Pastor David. I'm Helen, trusting God for a testimony soon. And God is ready to give you a testimony. Now, I'd like us to consider a few things uh, that what has God done? How does God turn your morning into dancing? You see, when you go through troublous times, 
turbulent times, God is strengthening your heart. He's building your character. He's also causing you to know how strong you are. I remember the situations I've gone through in life and I thought I almost despaired and wondered, oh, how am I ever going to get over this? But you know what the Lord assured me? When I came through, he told me, you see how strong you are. There's once I was stranded somewhere. Okay, seemingly stranded. I was in a situation, a physical situation, and uh, the comforting words that God spoke that were not really seeming to be comforting words, he said to me, if you get out of this situation, you can get out of any situation. And so I looked around and I thought, how, how on earth can I get out of this situation? It seemed so hopeless. I seemed so helpless. But here's the word of the Lord saying, if you can get out of this situation, you can get out of any situation. That was many years ago, more than 20 years ago. And so I decided, okay, if God says so, then it means he must have put in me what I need to get out. And I said, Holy Spirit, then help me to see what to do. And he did. A famous preacher by the name of Dr. T.L. Osborne of Blessed Memory said, when you pray, God gives you an idea. And if you work out that idea, it brings you the blessing that you desire. So I prayed, or I trusted God. He gave me an idea, and I did get out of that situation. And so to date, I always remember he said, if you get out of this situation, you can get out of any situation. Therefore, the Lord will bring you out of any situation. Purity from Kiambu is saying that, um, thank you for that word. I've been waiting for 40 years Plus. And I never thought about how Eden already had everything in it before Adam was put there. And hearing that is a that there's a blessing that will last longer than my affliction is so comforting. Amen. Purity, that is what is going to happen to you. Good evening, Pastor David. I thank God for a blessed day today. Please pray for me. I was driving the company which I work for. And I was involved in a minor accident in the line of my work and I was removed from being a driver to record management. I'm still trusting God to open a door of opportunity for me to be a driver again. Please pray for God's strength and favor to be restarted. Well, one thing I say, while you're a driver, don't worry. Joseph was a slave. He was, uh, though he was brought up as a pastoralist and knew about cattle, he was made uh, an agriculturalist. He had to learn new things as working, growing vegetables in Egypt through hard circumstances. After that, he went to prison and he had to learn to be a prison's officer. Then finally, he was put on the throne. So every situation that you're in, some of the demotions, God is simply preparing you for your next promotion. He's showing you that you can, you can not only survive, but shine in different areas. For your information, if you're going to be a bank manager, you may work in almost every department. So you'll be a teller one day, you'll be at a, re a reception at the other, another day, you'll be at the foreign exchange another day, you'll be somewhere else. But it's because you're being trained to manage the whole. So whichever situation you find yourself in, rejoice in the Lord. God is preparing you for something greater. Jennifer says, good evening, please pray with me. Royal, loyal cl clients that God connects me with the right person to work and someone creative and hardwork hardworking. May God do that for you. Hello, Pastor. I'm tuned in. Pray for me for financial breakthrough in my life and pay off the many debts. I'm so stressed. Well, put away stress. Put away stress because God is there for you. Eric says, I need prayers for an interview. May their feedback be positive. Amen. May the Lord God go with you and may God comfort you even as you are preparing. We're going to listen to another song and this is from Mission House and it's an invitation from God. Jesus said in uh, Matthew 11, 28, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. We're discussing comfort for the comfortless. The major comfort you can get is that you have an invitation from the good shepherd, the strong one, the one who is all able and is telling you, come and rest. Will you accept the invitation? In every um, answer of God and every blessing of God for you, there is a charge to you. And Jesus is saying, come unto me. Come, lay your burdens down. Come and rest. It's a choice you make. The world is telling you to be stressed, to be troubled. Oh, be worried. It's all bleak and black and doom and gloom. But Jesus is saying, come and rest. That is comfort for the comfortless. That's a song by Mission House. 
And may the Lord keep blessing you as we are on this program. Remy Kipchirchiri was saying already tuned into the show and getting blessed by the show. Prayer Circle family, I was blessed by the topic yesterday and I'd hope to get some of the notes yesterday on the show where we'll see what can be done about that and the Lord God is going to bless you. And some people have already, or those of you who've communicated on uh, SMS, remember our SMS numbers is 20316 for those who want to send a text message and on WhatsApp 0786 316 316. This is Prayer Circle where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God. Jesus is reaching out to you. Jennifer is saying, I'm Jennifer from Nairobi, please pray for my husband that the Lord will heal him physically and spiritually that he may experience the peace of the Lord. Thank you, and God bless you. And Jennifer, there is healing available with God. Praise Jesus, Pastor Dimitri. It's nice to see you on Family TV. Oh, my sister, Wakeo Anjao, good to hear from you. I thank God that you will share your deep wisdom in Christ with us. Glory be to God. May the Lord minister to your heart. Hello, Pastor David. Help me pray for a job and for my son and to, for my business also. That's Chris Juma in Kisumu. Chris Juma, may the Lord minister to you and bless your business and bless your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Shekinah is saying, David, I'm great. Hi, David. I'm grateful for strength at work. And I pray for my, uh, for my dad's title deed to be processed as the one in office is handling it. The one in office handling it is rogue. May God fight our battles and make our way in Jesus' name. I want to share a testimony just briefly there. Uh, we waited for long for our dad's title deed to be processed. But praise God. God has been faithful all the way. May God visit you in the name of Jesus. Someone is tuned in from Nakuru battling a specific addiction that literally makes them feel drifting, they're drifting away from God, needing support in prayers. I believe in the power of prayer and deliverance through Christ Jesus. Yes, indeed, and it will be available for you. We're going to be praying shortly. Shalom, I'm not feeling well. Pray also for my mama, Mkuzi, healing, health, restoration. Pray for my family to be rooted in Christ, my son to excel in education, and my daughter at work. Pray, pray for journey protection. My husband Amos traveling and his stay his return home safe and blessed. So shall it be. Someone is praying for, uh, saying, Hi, Pastor David. My name was left out in the university selections. I'm trusting God that I will secure a placement this time. Pray with me. Amen. Now, there's this testimony of somebody who I went to look for a placement in a certain university. And this, this young man, he prayed and he believed. And so he took a step and decided to go to the university himself. He did not know anyone. But while he was at the gate, some big car drove by and somebody, the window rolled down and he was asked, um, do you know where the administration block is? And he said, no, I'm sorry, I'm also going to the administration block. He was told, okay, come right in. So they got in. And when they got, they found the administration block, the man, the big shot who was there, he said, I've brought this, my two sons, so I would like you to consider them. And so, they were told, okay, fine, we'll consider them. And so their names were given out, and then they drove out, and he was dropped at the gate, and he went and took his bus, and he went home. Now, later on, the message went to that big shot, that man, and it, it said that uh, we have considered your request, and we are not able to place both your sons, but we have given one of them placement in this university. And guess who was given the placement? It is the brother who was picked at the gate. So God knows your name. He knows where you are, and may God favor you with special favors. All right. Now, we're talking about mourning. And uh, are you mourning about something? I'd like to uh, say and for us to consider, there are three types of mourning. And we, look at, we will look at them, each of them. There are three types of mourning. One is human mourning. Human mourning, we find it in uh, uh, Abraham in Genesis chapter 23, when Sarah, his wife of possibly 100 years or more, because they'd be married for long. Sarah died at 137. Sorry, she was 127. So if they got married when she was 20, they had been married maybe for 107 years or so. And he was married to one wife. And he loved her. So Abraham came to mourn and to weep for her. But as he was mourning, he said, I want to bury my dead out of my sight. So that was 
uh, emotional mourning. And he mourned for several days, then he buried her and he put it away. There's human mourning and it's normal. When we lose something, lose a relationship, lose a loved one, lose a job, lose an opportunity or lose something that was precious to us, we can mourn. It's an emotion that helps us to acknowledge that thing we had was precious. But what should we do with human emotion? We ought to put it behind us. There are days of mourning that should end. Genesis chapter 50 verse 4 talks about the children of Jacob mourning and it says when the days of mourning were ended. And that phrase appears so many times in the book of Genesis and other books of the Bible when the days of mourning were ended. God does not intend for us to mourn indefinitely. The human mourning has a time span. When you recognize and appreciate you've lost something precious and then you move on to thanking God for the time and the season you enjoyed that precious thing and you also appreciate him that he's going to be with you the rest of the way and he has other precious things and precious plans for you so that should be that morning should come to an end there is something I may call the spirit morning morning in the spirit morning in the spirit and morning in the spirit we find Jesus are sitting on the Mount of Olives, weeping over Jerusalem. Jerusalem was enjoying things. Life was going on as normal. They were eating and drinking and buying and selling and marrying and giving in marriage and celebrating and feasting. And things seemed to be going on well. But in the spirit, Jesus sensed something was wrong. And so he wept because there was something going to go wrong. And sometimes the Lord may put that kind of a mourning in your spirit, especially if you're an intercessor, prayer warrior, you're sensitive in the spirit. God may put a mourning in your heart. The spirit of God mourning because of things that are going wrong. People may be very happy, things are going on normal, but God is showing you there's something wrong. What do you do with that kind of mourning? Take it to the Lord in intercession and commit that matter to the Lord in prayer and leave it there. Don't continue. Jesus finished that weeping and he went on to complete his journey to the cross. He died, he rose again so that he may handle the matter. There is also a third type of mourning which many people are not aware about. It's demonic mourning. Now a demonic mourning is a spirit of sorrow that does not come from God, neither is it merely human. It comes from the pit of hell. It comes from Satan to keep one in perpetual mourning. A biblical example of uh, demonic mourning is Jacob. Jacob was a chosen man and blessed in many ways. He had, uh, he, had, he had wives and children and plenty of property. And one day his son Joseph disappeared. And when he, the, the Joseph disappeared, they brought him his coat. Do you know nobody told Jacob that his son was dead? Go read the scriptures again. The sons did not tell him. They said, we found this coat, this bloody coat identify whether it's your son's coat or no. And Jacob said, oh, it's my son's coat. Oh, my son, no doubt. He's been torn into pieces by a wild animal. And he started mourning. His sons tried to comfort him. He said, no, 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 leave me alone. I will go to the grave mourning. And so he wasted 22 years of his life mourning for Joseph who was meanwhile being processed by God. And when he saw him 22 years later, two years into the famine after seven years of plenty and 13 years of Joseph being trained in Potiphar's palace and in the prison, that's a total of 22 years. When he saw him, Pharaoh asked him, how old are you? He said, I am 130 years old. My days have been few and difficult. Why? Because he had spent his time mourning for no reason. The people who lost a relationship, lost a loved one so many years ago, missed an opportunity 10, 15, 20 years ago, and they are not sure. They are still in mourning. Today Jesus is saying to you, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I'd like to pray with you who is in any state of mourning. It could be human mourning, emotional mourning because of something precious that's gone from you. It could be spirit mourning. The spirit is showing you something wrong in your family, in the church, in the situation, in the country, in the institution where you are, at your place of work, and you're mourning. The Lord also wants to comfort you as you intercede and he shows you what he's going to do because he's going to intervene. 
And I want to pray especially for those who are in some demonic mourning, that your life is wasting away because of money you lost, somebody who disappeared with your money three, four, five, ten years ago, a relationship that was broken, somebody who gave you a baby and disappeared, a husband who became an alcoholic or went and took another wife, a wife who ran away from home, and you're still mourning. Jesus said, come and rest. Come and lay your burdens at his feet as we pray together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and bless you for the word of God that is showing us what to do with any type of mourning. You're showing us, Lord, how Abraham lost a precious loved one, the wife, his only wife, and the mother of his miracle son. And after living with her for over a hundred years, she passed on. But he came and said, I want to put my dead away out of my sight because I need to continue living. She has rested. She has gone to be with our fathers. But I have a life to live. I pray for somebody who's mourning over the loss of a loved one, over the loss of a precious relationship, a job, an opportunity. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, comfort them. Show them that there's life to live. We pray for comfort in the name of Jesus. We pray for somebody who's mourning. The spirit is mourning inside of them, showing them something that's going to go wrong and nobody around them seems to see or understand. But they are there in mourning trying to intercede. Oh God, comfort them that you're standing with them. You're helping them to pray. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession and so it shall be well. Satan will not prevail. There will be divine intervention come for them in Jesus name I pray for those who are in some demonic mourning Lord they've prolonged their sorrow for lost loved ones and they some may be feeling it's holy it's pure it's pious it's good but their lives are wasting away they can't work properly they can't think properly they can't sleep at night they can't enjoy new relationships they can't enjoy the blessings of God I bind the hand of every demonic spirit trying to perpetually keep somebody in mourning in the name of Jesus and we pray for your love and comfort to overwhelm them thank you Heavenly Father for comfort for the comfortless in Jesus precious name amen amen even before the storm is over I'd like to remind you that Jesus was walking on the water in the storm he didn't calm the storm first he came down from the mountain walked on the water went to where the disciples were and then he even invited Peter, come and walk on the water with me in spite of the storm. That's Jesus' invitation to you. Even before the trouble is over, you can receive comfort and walk on the storm with Jesus. But keep your eyes fixed on him. Get your eyes off the storm. Yes, there is rest for your soul. Well, this is Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet God's healing hands. And wow, this hour goes so, so fast. But uh, uh, let me read a few more messages. Joan is saying that I'm trusting God for a job and financial stability in my marriage. May the Lord do it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Stephen from Ahero is saying, Good evening, Prayer Circle. I kindly pray for my Sharon, who is admitted in the hospital with pneumonia, and now says, Good evening, Pastor David. I think that text had come earlier. Now he's saying, Good evening, Pastor David. I thank God for healing my wife of pneumonia. She was discharged from the hospital today. Yes, he had sent a message for prayer, and God has done it. Evening Family Media, Pauline from Nakuru. Please pray for my dad to take me back to work. I wronged and apologized, but um, okay, God will intervene for you. Yes, indeed, may the Lord grant you mercy and opportunity in Jesus' name. Someone say, please pray for me. I don't feel well. May the healing touch of God be upon you. Faith from Umoja is saying, kindly pray for the healing of Brian from Nyakach in Jesus' name. Someone's watching from Udiru 87. Mary Kessie, we hear you. And is saying, mine is a praise report. My extended family has gone through a mourning period these last two weeks, but still we can't help but thank God for his support to our cousins in comfort, in people's presence, and in provision of finances. And the messages from this station that I listened to throughout had a way of easing the pain. Thank you for this. God bless you. That's Anne Get testifying that God has comforted her. Amen. May that be your portion. 
And so as we come to an end of this program, I mean, this hour runs so fast, but we thank God because we have opportunity. And we'd like to appreciate all our partners, all the partners of Family Media, those of you who are partnering with Family Media daily, weekly, monthly, or regularly uh, by your finances and by your prayer to, so that you can keep Jesus on the airwaves. Yes, the Lord bless you and remember, may every seed sown, as the Bible says, may God remember every seed it's sown and cause it to be prosperous and to pour back in your life in blessing. So keep listening to Family Media, keeping Jesus on the airwaves. Very many good programs, both on Family TV and on Family Radio 316. And you can tune into them by going to familymedia.tv and listen online or watch online. And God is going to keep blessing your soul. Amen. Just one more I'll read because our time is up. Saying glory to God, my brother has been been discharged. Okay, let me read one, one more. Hi, Pastor, hi, prayer circle. I thank God for giving me a good day and a job. So somebody's got a job. So if you're there believing God for a job, there God is giving jobs. He's giving comfort. He's giving strength. And God will do the same for you. He is healing. I'd like to pray with someone here who has not known the comfort of the Lord. Maybe your life, you've been living, you know, you, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. This is your moment. I just want to pray with you in a moment because the ultimate comforter is Jesus. And when you receive him into your heart, then he can begin working from the inside as the world tries to butter you from outside. Jesus heals you from the inside. So you'd like to give your life to Jesus or you'd like to return to the Lord. You're backslidden, you ran away from God like the prodigal son. Come right back home. God is waiting for you. Pray with me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you. I'm a sinner. I've run from you. I return to you today. Forgive my sins. Change my life. Wash me with your precious blood. And give me your Holy Spirit and power to follow you and to live right. I commit my life to you. I turn from sin and Satan. And I agree to be a child of the Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer with me, you are born again. Your sins are washed away. Communicate with us on 0786-316-316 or SMS 20316 and let somebody guide you and help you. This is Family Media Prayer Circle, prayer on Radio 316 also, and familymedia.tv. As we round up this show, we pray that you have been blessed and God is going to continue ministering to you. So let's meet tomorrow, same place. Same time as we continue to, to explore how we can live as kingdom beings. I'm Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God.